What does it mean to believe in God? Believing in God can mean different things, depending on how we use the word believe. Here are three examples. A doctor may say, I believe that these pills will help you. The word believe here stands for a conviction. The doctor has looked at the problem and is convinced that this prescription will help. A hiker may say, I believe the mountain guide when he says that it is two more hours to reach the top. Here, believing means trusting someone. The hiker trusts what the mountain guide says because he knows the way. A soccer player may say, I believe in my team. What he is saying is, he can completely rely on his team. Three examples, three different things. All of these three ways of believing can be found in religion as well, and there they mean the following. First, a man of faith believes that God exists. As we have seen with the doctor, belief here stands for a conviction, and this conviction can have different reasons, as we have already seen, a personal experience of God, an insight, or the witness of others. Second, as in the case of the hiker and the mountain guide, belief can signify a kind of trust. A man of faith trusts the message of those people who have passed the faith on to him. Is this trust justified? Well, it's like with mountain guides. When you see that a mountain guide knows how to handle his equipment and that he is knowledgeable about the way ahead, then you trust his judgment. Now, looking at the life of Jesus, the apostles and the saints, their message and preaching, their commitment and humility, then all of this makes their message rather trustworthy. Third, as a soccer player may believe in his team, a man of faith will believe in God. In this case, to believe means to rely on God and to entrust yourself completely to Him. All three ways are ways of believing in God, but it is only the third that leads us to the core of what religious belief actually means, a living relationship with God. Therefore, when I say that I believe in God, I am not only saying that I believe in the existence of God or that I accept the message of Jesus and His apostles, but above all that, I entrust myself to God, that I rely on Him and I know He is always with me. This is what it means to believe in God. Hello, fourth graders. I hope you had a wonderful week. I am going to be teaching you our second lesson. It is, who is God? And from what we learned from the first lesson, we know that there's three persons in one God, right? We've got God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's verified on page 27. So if you go to your books, you go to page 27, you'll see. Everybody's out there having fun. You've got a mom and you got a dad and you got some kids playing soccer. So it looks fun, right? So we have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then if you turn to the next page, which is page 28, it's a beautiful saying up on top, a sentence. God has a loving plan for us. How beautiful. Each one of you has been created by God, entrusted to your parents, and God has a plan for you. So what you need to do is stay close to him because he'll show you the way. I really love that third paragraph in this chapter, too on page 28, where it says, you are an important part of God's plan. You are beautifully 
and wonderfully made. God has given you a body and a mind so you can understand and live in this world. God has also given you a soul, an inner life that does not die. Your body, mind, and soul help you come to know God so that you can cooperate in his plan. Isn't that beautiful? It's really, really beautiful. So very important to know God created you. He has a plan for you, and he loves you. All right, so if you go to page 29, it says one more time at the very top, three persons and one God, we know that. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's why, you know, so many things you begin with, even professional, you know, baseball players or football players or, you know, they'll always sometimes go like this, you'll see it, or they'll look up to heaven, whatever. They get it. They know. That's why it's so important when we bless ourselves. It's, we're saying the Trinity, the three persons and one God. Okay, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then, very important that you also know that it's a mystery because we really can't explain it. Anything we really can't explain. Like, you could explain H2O, right? Hydrogen to oxygen. You would know. You put them together, you get water. You can explain that, right? There are things in life, even though they're difficult, I can't even get into some of the theories and, you know, some of the mathematical equations and geniuses. and You can explain all that. But this, this is a gift of faith, that there are three people like the shamrock. St. Patrick used the shamrock uh, to the people in Ireland to explain the Holy Trinity. Because when you think about it, it's like, what? How can there be three people in one God? It's a mystery. And by our faith, we accept that mystery. So humans, if you go to page 29, the very last paragraph, it says, humans cannot fully understand the Blessed Trinity because God's mysterious, loving, and all-powerful nature is larger than our minds. One thing that we do know is that God's love, God is love. He loves us. Anything, that, anything good, anything holy, Anything uplifting, anything right is coming from God. Anything not is, you know, causing trouble or pain or anxiety or, you know, meanness or bullying. Or, that's not coming from God. Anything good and holy comes from God. And, and you come from God. So you have so much goodness in you and so much holiness. If you go to page 30, there's a very important, well, there's two, two important words on this one. Uh, restoring our friendship with God is called salvation, okay? When uh, people are doing God's will, God promised that they would have eternal life. And God sent his son, Jesus, so that we would all be saved. We would have something called salvation. So when you're friendship isn't restored with God, you're not going to have salvation, salvation. You want that. You know, God gave us the sacraments so we could utilize them so that we could et attain eternal life and salvation and be with Jesus. So that word salvation is important. Okay, it's restoring our friendship with God. It's called salvation. That's right on page 30. And then uh, we read in the Bible that God promised to send a Savior, or another word for Savior is Messiah. So Messiah means anointed one. So the Messiah is the anointed one, okay? Not the Holy Spirit, all right? The Messiah is the anointed one, a person who has a special mission. A Messiah sent by God has a mission to save God's people. All right, so who do you think the Messiah is? That's another name for the Messiah. Who was sent? Who, in chapter 1, we said the decade of the rosary, she said yes to God's plan to, to, to um, the angel Gabriel who appeared to her 
and asked her if she would be the mother of God. She said yes. So who was she carrying in her womb? Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. That is who God promised to send, and he did, to save us. So the word Jesus means God saves. There you go. Jesus means God saves. Isn't that great? A lot of people don't know that. Jesus means God saves. And he's, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, okay? Not the third, not the first, the second, okay? The, the second person of the Trinity, okay? And Jesus, of course, was Jewish. Uh, his father was Joseph. His adopted father was Joseph. And his mother was Mary. And he grew up going to the synagogue. And he was very, very, very holy in the synagogue because his parents, both Mary and Joseph, were very devout and very holy and practicing Jews. So that's important to know, too, that he was a, a very devout and holy practicing uh, Jewish boy, and then he grew up and became a man until the age of 33 when he did the ultimate sacrifice for all of us and, and died on the cross to save us from all our sins. So that's very important to know that Jesus loves us so much. You know, God loves us so much that he, he saved us, all right? Very important. All right, so if you go to the next page, which is page 32, when Jesus died on that cross, he didn't, he didn't say, all right, goodbye, good luck. Hope everything goes well. See you. No, he didn't. He didn't forget about us, right? God the Father loves creation. He loves his people. He's told us in scripture time and time again that I will be your God and you will be my people. So there's such a connection there. So after Jesus was crucified on the cross, and everybody knows that that's Good Friday, and then on a Holy Saturday, you know, he waited three days, but uh, he was getting ready for the resurrection. And that happened Easter Sunday. And when he arose from the dead, he appeared to some of the apostles. And that, that very special Pen Pentecost when they're all scared now because they followed him. And now it's scary because look what they did to him. They put him on a cross and they killed him. So it's very, very frightening. And the Blessed Mother Mary, our Blessed Mother, and a lot of the apostles are up in this room, and they're all afraid, and they're all scared, and they're thinking, what are they going to do? Well, you know, again, God kept his promise. He sent the Holy Spirit. So that's very, very important for you to know, that God never leaves us alone. If you go to page 32 in your books, you know, it tells us right there, and you'll, you see in the picture in your books there, you see the doves. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is often pictured with a dove, <clears throat> excuse my voice, with a, a flame over the head. And that's the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And it was amazingly enough, there was a, the strong wind, and it filled that entire you know, room and house, and the tongues of fire came, and that was the beginning of our church. That was the beginning of our Catholic faith. It's pretty incredible, right? So I'll email you what I would like you to look at online for the videos because some of these videos are really beautiful. I see on the bottom of this page they have St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. And she was another nun like St. Avila, um, Teresa of Avila. So I'll see if that video is good to watch. And... You can also answer the questions because that's important. And it's basically the Blessed Trinity, which you, you all know. You know, Jesus the Messiah 
and what does it mean to be anointed. So if you guys can, can do that for us for this chapter two, that would be wonderful. Know that what you learned in this second chapter is extremely important. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Your parents love you, but, you know, your family loves you. But um, the gift of our faith is there's such a higher power that really cares for us and is there for us. When, you know, we have to keep trying to find out his plan for us. Okay, even me at this age, I'm, I'm finding out what his plan is for me. But anyway, let's, let's end with one Hail Mary, okay? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, God bless your families, keep learning. I will answer you, call to me, I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know, call to me.
by prayer and petition With thanksgiving, present your request to God Do not be anxious About anything But in everything By prayer and petition With thanksgiving, present your request to God Thanksgiving, present your request to God And the peace of God